here's a good question. My biggest barrier to thinking I need a huge discount no matter what on every deal. Someone's asking 200K in the ARV's 350. I don't need to get a big discount. Here's the thing in wholesaling. I don't know snot. I don't know anything. Uh, let me tell you, when I go into a deal, I am smart enough to know that I know nothing. And the more, like the better wholesaler you become, you realize very quickly, you actually don't know anything. You're you're good at guessing, but you're, you're never, you know that you're not perfect. The only wholesalers that think they know perfectly how much a thing's going to sell for are the idiot wholesalers. You know why? Because I have deals to this day. Okay. We had a, um, I think a $38,000 uh, JV deal in the mail. Uh, we just got <laughs> sent it. I think on the podium, we were projecting to make 10, mm -hmm. 10, 15. And we sent it to some cash buyers. I think they were at like 10 grand to make it. And then the cash buyers like, oh, pay 38. It's like, you know, if I was a genius, I'd do, it's, it's, it's 10, but really it was 38. And I didn't know until I just asked how much are you willing? Guys, your wholesaling deal is not worth anything unless someone else is willing to buy it. You might think it's worth something. It's worth something to you, but you're not willing to buy it, right? It's only what someone else is willing to pay for it. And the always big example I always say is like, all right, let's use another one. You know, who's a, uh, we love Def Leppard, right? A sign Def Leppard, uh, who's the uh, Def Leppard drummer with one arm? Or is that Van Halen? I forgot his name. You gotta get your uh, on that. He's that, pretty that cool. Def he, he's cool, right? Like, yeah. he's, he's amazing talent, right? Yeah. One arm. If he signed an, a Def Leppard album from the 80s, someone, a Def Leppard fan would probably pay 100 bucks for it. If oh, I get, let, let, let's, let's talk about my sister. Actually, she likes Def Leppard. I go to the average TikTok kid that's like 15 Surprise years old. I know who Def Leppard is. I love Def. Okay. You blast in the car all the time as a kid. All right. So, if I go to a 15 year old kid that only does TikTok and they have a five second attention span, they, they don't know what Def Leppard is. Yeah. How much are they willing to buy that for? Huh. They'll give me a dollar for it, maybe, right? But I thought it was worth a hundred. It's worth a dollar to that buyer. It's worth a hundred for this buyer. So now I know it's in between this and this. So the thing you got to understand is what your deal is worth is what someone's willing to pay for it. And a lot of people think that's exactly worth this amount. It's not. Never is. It's, it's hilarious. Cause like, you know, Pawn Stars, it's like when they get the expert and the expert says it's worth a hundred. Yeah. Hey, expert, are you going to pay a hundred for it? No, I've never paid a hundred for this yeah. thing. And they, they, they and buy you it. You notice how that influences the seller's decision? Yeah. So it's worth a hundred. He was, he said, give me 10 bucks for it. Now he says a hundred. Now he wants 110. That's how real estate goes, by the way. If a realtor tells you it's worth a, worth 250, then they want uh, 300. And so it's like a big game. So all you got to do is find people that will take a decent discount, a healthy discount and move forward because you, you never know. And if you want an exact number, you got to become a realtor because they spend hours, if not days, weeks trying to come up with but a perfect realtors number. Are not buyers. And then what do they do? They overprice they it always overprice to play it. the game. And then we're known as wholesalers. We underprice it. So that's why we teach you the little known trick go for no, it just saves you a lot of time and energy because most of you guys are chasing people on retail values. Some of your FISBOs buyers, when they list it for 200 and you get it under contract for 100, you think you hit it out of the park and you find out it's worth 70. Yeah. Because you just fell into the ultimate buyer's trap. So you've got to just, ARV is a quick glance. This is roughly what it's worth. And then you use that as kind of a snuff test if they're motivated or not. That's it. You cannot let the end seller or the realtor set the ARV because they they know they're going to hit down and that's how they play the game in real estate. And let me, let me share this too. Realtors will overprice it because they know what it's worth and they'll mm. put it for above that to see if someone's going to buy it or get below that, right? Yeah. They just squeeze the most out of the deal. Pretty smart. The thing about wholesaling is like getting the deal. I hate to say this, but your Wrong. seller does not care what your ARV formula is. Your seller does not care what the repair costs are. Your seller does not care about any of that stuff. I don't. Your seller only cares about one thing, and that's what they should care about. How much are you going to offer me for my house for cash? Either I'm okay with it or I'm not. Yeah. The seller already has a price in their head. Our job is not to convince somebody to go down in price. Now, there's some deals where I, I do that, obviously, but... Now I was breaking down. I had an hour and a half appointment um, recorded um, a while back uh, for training acquisitions manager, and we went break it. I on that appointment it was a full hour and a half. No, an hour forty six minutes, start to finish with a pour and all that stuff. I got sixty thousand dollar deal. I legit. Okay, this is the funniest thing. I had to convince. I had to, on this appointment convince the seller that they had to go down in price, and I got them down. I think fifty grand on price. You know why? Why? Because they thought the house was worth I think two fifty mm -hmm. because the neighbor's house sold for two fifty, and that's how they based it. So now that I know they sit on a throne of lies and their foundation <laughs> sucks, all I have to do is just take one one card off of it and it falls down there back on my price. You just used a Will Ferrell quote. Of course, I love Will Ferrell, but because he's sitting on his throne of lies, all I have to do is show him that his throne's stupid. Now, some sellers they base on price because that's when that's okay. Yeah. But he based his price off of what the neighbor sold for, yeah. and I explained, okay, Mr. Seller, let, let's break this down. Let's compare your house and this house. Sure, it tells me I want two fifty for this thing. I'm like, this thing's worth two hundred ish. 
right? So guess what I do? This is all I do. I say, okay, what's the neighbor's house? Let's look it up online together. Okay, we pop it up. This house is 2,000 square feet. What's your square footage? Uh, 1,200. That's different, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm acting stupid. Like, yeah. you know, let, let me give you 250. Let's just make sure they're both the same. Literally have this recording. Like, okay. Two, okay, this is, do you see how there's 800 less square feet? Oh, I didn't know that. I just sold, sold for 250. That's what, okay, okay. This is a brand new metal roof. You have a shingle roof that's 20 years old that's leaking. Huh. Okay. Uh, this has a pool. Do you have a pool? Hmm. No. How much would it cost for me to put in a pool? And I'm like, okay, it cost me this. And I literally just, I just go down the line and bring the guy down in price. Yeah. I mean, just, and here's the thing. He wouldn't, be, if I told him the stuff, he wouldn't believe me. I actually had to physically show him. Yeah. And so, yeah, those are cases where I have to actually convince the seller to go down in price. And I'm not convincing him off anything. I just show him facts. Yeah. And some sellers have wrong facts. So I just present the facts to them. And then that brought them down on price. I'm not convincing them. I'm not that type of person. But when someone's that high in price, they got to understand. And so he was actually wanting to sell for at what? Like, I think 140 bucks a square foot. That's what he actually wanted to sell it for. He just thought his square foot was up. He thought his square feet was 2000. I'll tell you this. You could probably do it. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I can't walk into a house and within 15 seconds and figure out the square footage in my head. I'm like, I'm stupid. I got to like... I'm pretty like, good about you're that. You're pretty good about yeah. it. I'm like, but a, a 1,400 square foot house and a 2,000, I can kind of tell, but I'm not exact on it. I have to look up the numbers. I, 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 to this day, I'm that much of an idiot with that kind of stuff. Yeah. But here's, I don't, I have the facts. So I have to realize it. And so as most sellers, it's crazy. So what I want you to understand is we're not here to convince someone. Maybe you do it on that end. But the thing is 90% of my wholesaling deals, I lock it up for the lowest I can. And then from there, I give a high price, just roughly like a realtor to a cash buyer and see where they're at. Yeah. And guess what? If the realtor says no to me, this is the one thing wholesalers do wrong. I ask, I say to the realtor, why? I ask him, why did he say no? No wholesaler does this anymore. Yeah. It breaks my heart. Ask your cash buyer, why didn't you want to buy it for? Most wholesalers are like, oh, he's just an idiot. He's going to buy this great deal. No, ask them why they're not buying that deal. There's a reason. Cash buyers are smart people. They buy it to either rent it out, money, or they flip it for a profit, money. It, it's all about money with them. It's not because they've, they're have they not buying it for sentimental value. And so you ask them why, they'll tell you, give you a money reason. Yeah. Most of the time, number one, it's, it's just too much work for me, which is a money thing and a time thing, or you just have the deal locked up for too high. And when two cash buyers tell me that, I don't care. But when five tell me that, I know something's up. It's kind of like, um, I, this is kind of a funny example, but like, do you guys ever have a crazy friend, like a, cr like a legit crazy crazy friend. I, I have some crazy friends right here. And it's like, they think they're normal, right? And when someone calls them crazy, they're like, how dare you call me crazy? But when five people call them crazy, yeah. it's like, oh, I guess I might be crazy. And so that's the thing about cash buyers. I'm not crazy on my price. If one person says I'm overpriced or two, but when five or six say I'm overpriced, I got to start looking at the mirror now, right? You just got to look at the data. Like you can't take it personally. You just kind of move on. And guys, I see a lot of people comment, ah, I'm working with a realtor and stuff. A conversation with a realtor is completely different with a motivated seller. There's only one angle to go out a realtor to get rid of a problem of like a stale listing they have and get them their commissions. If you just focus on those two things, but you got to be a legit buyer and you can't do the normal things you do on off-market property. So I see a lot of comments just telling you, you have to go after the commissions, get them paid, and you got to end their pain on the listing. If you can do that, you got a shot at it, but you have to have usually some sort of funding source. So yeah, guys, don't be overcomplicating the air via repair. And the last thing I want to talk about is your cash buyers. Here's the thing. When you come up with your formula for your MAO, yeah. it's stupid. It's the, because it, just lock it up for the lowest you can and then see what, what a cash buyer can. Of course you want to be in a range. I'm always at a range. But the thing is you can't be, if you put that time into actually trying to build a report with the seller, it'd be way better. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is I get all these wholesalers are like, I calculated the repair cost at this and I did this and I did my comps at this and you spent 45 minutes doing it. Here's the thing. Your cash buyer doesn't care what your ARV is. They don't care what your MAO is. They don't care about the repair costs because they do it all themselves. Yeah. And their formula is completely different than yours. And so that is the thing. And so because they're doing it differently, just lock it up for the lowest price you can. That's where you want to put most of your focus on. And once you put your focus on that, not getting the MAO, but the LAO. LAO. So we've coined this, we've talked about forever. Stop focusing on the MAO, focus on the LAO, the least allowable offer, because that- Because where are you going to go from when the MAO, if they say no? So here's the thing. You're done. When you get your real estate deal and you're That's trying to make, do. if I'm trying to make $50,000 on a wholesaling deal and I locked it up for, let's say 150 grand and mm -hmm. I want to sell it for 200. What's the, e what's an easier way to make that 50 grand by convincing a cash buyer to go up on their price and trying to show them data and show them why they're stupid and wrong. Real estate's got a lot of ego. You know, people like to be right. Or 
why don't I just lock up the deal for twenty thousand dollars less? So if a cash buyer wants to pay me thirty grand on a deal for the assignment, what's it, what's easier? Getting the seller down by twenty grand by building more rapport, or by trying to tell the cash buyer he needs to go up twenty grand and try to convince him? You're right. You know the answer to it. So focus on the L A O, guys. Go to freehealthing.com. It's all there. This is the. I want to let you know. Nobody else in the wholesaling industry talks about this stuff. And the last tip, guys, is on your cash buyer, especially if you're new, you get all excited, you get your first cash buyer, you think you got a great deal, and he or she just trashes you. Ah, it's a piece of junk. It'll never work, blah, blah, blah. Please don't take one cash buyer and let them destroy your entire business. No. A lot of them have their own agenda and they just think they're beating you down and they know you're inexperienced. Now, if five or six say it, heed the warning, but never let, I've had one person completely trash me. I go, oh my God, what am I going to do? This is bad. And then I called two or three other and I had it sold quickly and only to find out that person was just trying to knock me down 50k so let, let me give you one example so we have a deal right now we bought it for i think 205 uh -huh. we bought it for 205 and we put 15 grand into it and we're selling it under contract for 288 or something like that to it yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's a good flip i'm trying to get rough numbers not trying to get the exact numbers but like it's a good amount okay we're gonna make what 60 70 like it ain't a bad amount on a flip right like hey 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 we don't talk about all the flips we do. We don't talk about all the deals we do, but this is a good flip for us. Okay. We had one person, a real, cause we listed on the market. One realtor offered it to buy it for 220, 220, 220. Guess what? We sold it. We had a lot. We have it on the contract for 280, 285 mm -hmm. or something like that. So one realtor it. thinks it's worth 220. If I followed their advice, <laughs> I'd sell it for 220 yeah. and just get, but you know what? I said, you know what? Let's see what other people are willing to do for it. Yeah. And you know, I was like, you, you talked to me. I, I said, I think a single tell for 255 260 so we we run a wager on every every anything we put on the market we're not talking about regular assignments because you have to and like we have a this running bet on stuff, all that stuff yeah. and it's funny because it's so funny because we're rarely ever right sometimes it's lower but a lot of the times it's higher that's why i say we're an idiot because we don't know yeah and it's like so the thing is when you're new and you get like one data point you're like Oh my God, this person knows more than me. No, you're on target. Remember, you have something they desperately need. And most realtors and cash buyers, they have their own agenda. So just make sure you get multiple data sources before you change your pricing and everything. Because I got to tell you, when I first started, it rattled me. It rattled me so much to the point I did more JVs than most people because I didn't want to deal with the cash buyers and I gave away a lot of money. So if you get one that trashes you, just toughen your skin up a little bit. If six trash you, heed the warning. If one trashes you and the other one's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're offering me at that price, then understand, do not let one person define your business plan. You've put in the hard work. You have something they need. You only need one. You don't need consensus of everybody, but go past one. So many guys go, oh, I reached out to one cash buyer. I'm like, Use, and by the way, usually the first cash buyer is the one that beats you up the most. Yeah. I don't know why it is, but it's just the truth. And so just understand that, that what, what your deal is worth is what someone else is willing to pay.